Hey everybody. So today I'm going to set up my hammock shelter uh, and kind of show you a couple different ways I do that. I've been using this little method for uh, uh, several years and it is uh, tried and true. It's pretty bomber. It's never let me down. So let's get to work. Before we get started, I just wanted to go over my ridge line. This is one of many, many ridge lines that I have and that I've used over the years. I've used uh, all the Dyneema rope and all that kind of stuff, but this is just something everybody can go get pretty cheap. It's paracord, 5 millimeter, of course. I have some Prusix made out of 2.5 millimeter cord on there with some S beaners. On one end of this, I'll have uh, a carabiner like this. Really, any carabiner will work. This one I had, so I threw it on there because I really wouldn't use it for anything else. And that is made by Night Eyes. On the other side, of the uh, ridge line, we have this night eyes cam lock, and you just kind of you can put your cord in there. It'll take from two to five millimeter pulls one way, but not the other. And this is the kayak glutton lazy man's answer. Uh, it's really effective though, and you put it in there, and you're good to go. Now there's a lot less uh, weighty hardware you can buy up there from Dutchware and some different things like that. But kayak camping, you're really not as concerned about the weight, so this is the way I've been rolling for that. And it's really bomber, and it's really easy, and again, it's, it's much more affordable than some of the higher-end stuff. If you're getting into it, and it's a lot easier on your fingers if you're just in a kayak. So here you see me stringing the ridge line. I've got the carabiner side on the tree, and now I'm putting the cam lock side. You want to pull that pretty tight, and then just pull it back and it's locked. This is the Kelty Noah's Tarp 12. I just wanted to show this configuration real quick. You put it on there in the diamond formation. And again, I like the Kelty Noah's Tarps because they're very durable compared to some of the uh, more lightweight tarps you'll find out there. Both of these tarps I've had for several years and they're still bomber, still holding up. And they're relatively light. Uh, the cumin fiber and the seal nylon, that's all gonna be a lot lighter but it's also all going to be a lot more fragile, something to consider. And this right here is your everyday, hey, I've got a tarp over my hammock set up, and this will keep you dry. Uh, most cases, uh, it's pretty much how most people rig little uh, hammock tarps. There's some other different formations out there. I just wanted to show this. This is not what I'm making today. Today I'm going to showcase the cold weather bomb shelter I make with my Kelty Noah's Tarp 16. You just want to hook up the center tie out point in a square formation with the Noah's Tarp 16 here. And once you get that, pull a little bit tight and then uh, pull your tarp over your ridge line. My ridge lines are 40 feet long because I go about 20 feet between trees, more or less, and an average 7 feet around big trees. So that's 14 more feet and that gives you 6 feet to play. Once you get in there, you want to pull your two corners together and then pull them kind of tight and about where they intersect the ground. So you got to pull them tight and then wherever they naturally touch the ground, you want to stake them out there. And you want to do that for both sides. This is what it looks like on the inside. As I come down, that's where they meet the ground naturally, so that's where they're staked out. Next, I want to pull the next guy point, one back, and stake that, and I want to do that for all four around the edges. So that makes a square footprint with two gables on the inside. Next, you want to get your two millimeter uh, guy out points, and I just have a quick uh, S-beaner and I'll tie this quick knot. It's a quick release knot and it takes just a second to tie. I can leave those there for two weeks at a time, which I've done many, many times and they do not pull out. You want to do that for all four tie out points around the side and that really pulls out your head room and your moving around room inside the tarp. And here's a close up of that knot I'm tying. Make a loop. Go around your tree or whatever object you're using. Pull it tight and then a little loop and leave your end just like that and it holds it. You want to get out, just pull it, you're done, you're gone. One more time.
So here's the tarp constructed. Uh, there's no hammock in there yet. And as you can see, it's ready to go. I'll take a peek inside. Lots of room. Got your ridge line. As you can see, I've got plenty of space in here. I can turn the camera all the way around. Uh, plenty of headroom. At this point, I usually open the doors of one side to make entry and egress easier. And it's time to hang the hammock. Uh, the hammock I've been using lately is a War Bonnet Blackbird. I uh, really like this hammock. It's super comfortable, uh, very lightweight, and very, very durable. It's much like a Hennessy, but uh, made by a smaller manufacturer. And they've kind of perfected the Hennessy design, if you will. So at this point, your hammock's in there. I've got my snake skins on it. And you basically just want to get it centered in your tarp area and about the right tension to give you a good hang. Uh, there it is. You can see the other uh, Prusik. Oftentimes I'll hang my Eno lights or whatever you need can hang from anywhere in there. There's another look at the Prusik holding the tarp up and the cam lock and about where the hammock strap folds. You can loosen and adjust these and they tension. Another thing here is these buttons that I've put on there. These are craft buttons from Hobby Lobby and it allows me to seal my gable ends to minimize any airflow. So another thing I do is I put these little snaps on my tarp if you can see that. Uh, my friend Keith uh, saw what I did and actually installed a little strip of Velcro with some shoe goo and that's held up for him uh, pretty good. A little bit more weight if you're a backpacker, but it actually seals a lot better in high wind situations. This will do for 90% of the time. Uh, it rarely unbuckles unless you pull your stakes out a little too hard. Here I am, you can see the wind is blowing, but nothing's getting through. I got the snap zippered and wherever your tarp lands, it just flows through there freely. Another thing you're going to want to do is put the tarp all the way to the ground and pile leaves around the edges to keep the airflow off. Here's a look at the finished shelter. I have 100% confidence in this. I've spent hundreds of nights under it. Of course, if you have super wind, you're going to need to really get a good stake in the ground. Or if you have a lot of ice or snow, you're going to need to mine that, make sure it doesn't accumulate on your tarp. But that's for any situation. In rain, uh, you're going to be dry. Uh, just take some precautions about letting water wick in on your cordage, be it your hammock or your ridge line. But uh, this is the object. What we're trying to do here, make a shelter so you can get in there, stay warm and dry. Using your tarp in this configuration with the walls to the ground and the gables sealed tight will add about 10 to 15 degrees of warmth to your sleeping experience. Give it a try. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.